I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Greetings, nerds. Welcome to another episode of our podcast, Nerds Are Us. I'm Rach, and I'm joined today by Jam. Hello. Hi. And our special guest today is actor comedian Mark Christopher Lawrence. Hi, Mark. Hi. How you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Uh, thank you for chatting with us today. My pleasure. So, Mark, you're quite the activist in a bunch of different organizations, such as ACT Today, Operation Smile, Reading, Writing, It's Exciting, the Riley Foundation, and many more. Um, what was the moment you realized you wanted to give back? Like, well, you know, I think I think it's it's you know people come to me and ask for help for stuff, and um, you know it's like my my journey has been that all my life you know there's been somewhere along the line where someone has helped me, so it's 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 hard for me to turn people down when they're asking for help. Why do you think it's so important for folks to be uh, conscious of? giving back do you feel like that's something that a lot of people take for granted that we should be more aware of i don't know i think i think uh for the most part people want to help you know um and, and usually it's, it's usually in situations that uh, that affect them personally i mean for me act today is probably the, the um the thing that that I'm stuff for all the time uh, because it affects me personally, my, my, um, nephew. Act today is, uh, autism care and treatment. And, um, uh, they also have a branch for military family. And so, um, my nephew has three children that are all in the autism spectrum. So, um, I do things for Act Today, uh, without hesitation. Uh, and it, it started because I wanted to learn more about autism. And people that run that organization were so uh, great that it was just, you know, a good fit. Our daughter is on the spectrum, so that's actually a really good thing to learn about that we're going to actually look into. Yeah, you should. I, you know, like, like uh, Autism Speaks, for example, you know, they're looking for the cure. Um, Act Today takes into account what people go through today. They say it takes, you know, three million dollars to raise the asset to and so, um how does a parent a parent raise a child with that uh looming over them. So uh there's grants, there's there's um you know clinical help, there's all sorts of things that you, you could you could uh, benefit from by checking into uh assets and care treatment. Very nice. Um, I actually met you a couple of years ago, the first year that we went to Nerd HQ. Um, it was right outside of Petco, and you were you were filming something, and I came over and got my picture taken with you in my Jeffster t-shirt. <laughs> ah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, I remember that. So you do a stand-up comedy show. What can one expect from your comedy shows? Uh, you can expect to laugh. I um, uh, generally in my act, I, I, I kind of talk about me and my life and what's, what my observations. I'm a storyteller. Um, I'm obsessed with that, uh, and so most of my act comes directly out of my life. Life stories are always the best, I think. Yeah, I think because people want to want to go. Uh, wow, at least my life doesn't suck like that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's easy to laugh at other people's misery. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Where and when can people see some of your upcoming shows? Who I have going on? I think um, my next uh, shows that, that that are that are happening are. I'm totally unprepared for that question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Um, my next show, um, so this is next Wednesday. Uh, I'm at the I'm at the Rock Church in East County, San Diego, on next Friday, 
and then um, up at the at Lost Unlimited on, on uh, September 8th. Okay. Okay. Random question. Do you sing karaoke, and if so, what are you, what is your go-to song? Uh, occasionally I'll sing karaoke, and um, I have a few go-to songs. I, I'll, I'll go to Yesterday, uh, the Ray Charles version, or um, Georgia Mine, or I'll go to some Sam Cooke, Bring It On Hockey. Very nice. Most people know you for your role as Big Mike on Chuck, and you were also Unique's father on Glee. Um, what has been your most memorable acting experience? Most memorable? Hmm. That's a hard question. Um, you know, I, I think because I do a little bit of everything, voiceover, uh, stage, stand-up, um, TV and film, uh, out of stick out of my mind. Uh, my very first job was on Hill Street Blues, so, you know, that's always in the back of my mind. Um, Terminator 2, uh, well, and Hill Street Blues changed the way TV is made. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Terminator 2 changed the way, you know, movies are made. Um, so both of those were, were fantastic. In fact, uh, Terminator 2, um, I was supposed to work two days, end up working six weeks. And, you know, it was, it was, you know, at that point, you know, my, my best paying gig ever. Uh, uh, there's a little movie called Fear of a Black Hat that I did with uh, a good friend of mine, Rusty Cundiff. Um, it's a sort of a rap spinal tap. You know, okay. that movie is probably my favorite uh, thing to have worked on because I was working with, with friends. Um, and we were a fake rap group, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is, which is really funny. Um. Uh, we actually did an album uh, that that sold you know two or three hundred copies every day. After you know years later, the um, record company was a web hits a day because people were trying to buy the album even after it was out of print. So probably Fear of a Black Hat was my most memorable. Okay. So I have a quick question for you, and this comes from my boss, uh, who's a big Chuck fan. By the end of the run of Chuck, how sick of you were you of Subway? You know, the Subway thing was, wasn't bad at all. I think I was more disappointed in uh, the writing and that, you know, I didn't really have anything to do except go in and eat Subway. Okay. Yeah. It's like, I think I'm a little more clever with my character than, you know, bring Mark in because... So, so I always say that I single-handedly save the show. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> they actually, I, I think, I think they had Zach eat a sandwich once, and Yvonne and Josh, but the Subway people liked me the best. And uh, you know, I don't know. I, I think um, you know, over the years, that they just put more more thought into, like even even the the bringing in the guest stars, these huge names. They, I'm one. The relationships of the characters that were the series regulars. Um, instead of bringing in huge guest stars, I think that would have helped our following better than bringing in stars um, uh, thinking that their following was going to follow them to TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, don't, I don't think that worked. I'm not sick of Subway. I still eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody could really get sick of Subway. <laughs> I think it was something about the way the way that you would say the flavors that you were getting ready to eat the the inflection that you used in your voice made me always really want a sandwich. <laughs> ah, hilarious! I, yeah, I think I think I'm gonna take my film crew with me into Subway one day and order a sandwich and, and, and sort of do the description like that while I'm there. <laughs> I think that'll be funny. Do you have a favorite sandwich from Subway? I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big tuna fan, so usually I go to Subway, I'm eating tuna. Um, but I do their pastrami, and I do like that, so those two are my go-tos. What is your real-life superpower? My real-life superpower? Um, laughter. Um, hey, you should ask, because get it. If you were a superhero, what would your power be? Mm -hmm. And uh, I always said that I, I, I wish I had the power to heal. And um, uh, one day I was doing a show 
uh, at a church, a big comedy show at a church. And uh, toward the end, I'm just kind of talking to the audience, and that question came up. And I said, yeah, well, if I was super, super I wish I had the power to heal. And this lady stands up, and she said, you know, uh, you do have the power to heal. She says, I, I um, you prep for years. She says, in literally the past six or eight months, I haven't been out of my house, and I've been uh, sitting alone at home, and some friends drug me out here to see this. And I haven't laughed so much in years, she says. And so I feel like you're healing me today. So, you know, I think I have my superpower is is healing through laughter. That's, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. That is so sweet. Yeah, it almost makes me cry. <laughs> uh, given the choice of anyone uh, in the nerd community, real or fictional, who would you want to have a drink with? A, a drink? Real or fictional Wolverine. Yeah. Wait, I think because answer. he and I are very similar. It's like I've been acid and prone all my life, and um, <laughs> I tend to heal really fast. <laughs> so, cool. we talk about battle scars with him. Uh, what would constitute a perfect day for you? Um, there'd be a lot of napping involved. <laughs> yes, napping. I think, um, you know, I'd start the day off, you know, waking up late, you know, maybe get to the gym, maybe not, hopefully waking up, you know, in, after the gym, maybe go have a little bit of lunch, go, come back, take a nap, go to the beach for a while, come back, take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be a perfect day. Cause I feel like sometimes Are you secretly a day, cat or something? I, I think I am. It's like it's like I, I find myself sleeping more and more every day. You know, I, I'm trying to get my 18 hours in. I find myself waking up in odd places. The other day I woke up in the dryer. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that might be an entire different balls. We need to try to go see one of your comedy shows when we go out to San Diego next year. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll try to do another, a uh, couple of years ago I did a show here during Comic-Con. So maybe I'll try to do the same thing uh, next year or year after. We'll be on the lookout for it. Maybe I can get Subway <laughs> to the show. Maybe you can Listen get up, Subway. <laughs> Um, actually, speaking of Subway, what would be the Mark sandwich? What would you put in it? Uh, it would be very plain. It would be, um, mayo, a little bit of mustard, pickles, and tuna. Hmm. I'm going to have to try that next time. <laughs> I love tuna. Or, I'm a big or the tuna exact fan. same thing with pastrami. Jamie, now I'm hungry for a sandwich. <laughs> uh, what is your current TV obsession? Um, you know, the Olympics, I, 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 I don't watch much TV just because I, you know, I don't really have time. Um, and recently I've been watching a lot of like me TV and antenna TV, those old shows. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now it's like I'm, I'm watching the Olympics related to I mean, um, but, but yeah, I, I like sports and I like, I like the travel shows and the food shows, but right now, it's all about the Olympics. Yeah, it's amazing how just watching the Olympics brings out so much of your own, like, patriotism. I'm, like, singing Oh Canada down the streets. It's, it's actually kind of embarrassing. Ah, ah. <laughs> Hilarious. I miss uh, Canada. I used to do, do stand-up in Canada a lot. And the, uh, these are and I was in, I was, I would do the shows up in, um, like Prince George, all the way up to like Lake Terrace. Oh, nice. I miss being up there. Yeah. Yeah, if you're ever out near Vancouver, I will definitely. There was a show there. called, called like the Brass Monkey or something like that, or the Monkey's Paw or something like that in Vancouver. And I did a show there, uh, probably twice a year. Okay. Kelowna, I did some shows in Kelowna. Kelowna is beautiful. Wine country, yeah. Kelowna is gorgeous. 
a lot of cowboys act in Kelowna. Mm-hmm. I actually saw a country concert in Kelowna. <laughs> so many cowboy hats. So many. Yeah. If you could change one thing about the film and television industry, what would it be? The auditioning process. I think on the level I'm at at this point in my career, uh, there are a lot of people on this level. You know, you don't have to drag a guy in to audition. You know his work. It's like you see the picture, you know who it is. Um, yesterday, for example, I went in for an audition, and there were six guys reading for the same part, and we always see each other at audition, so usually it's one of us that's going to get the job. So you should just look at the picture, look at the resume, look at the reel, and go, okay, I'll take this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, at this level, everybody's good. That's fair. I, have, right? I feel the same way about the interview process in general when you're applying for a job. It's just, they always ask the same tired questions. I feel like, what is the point of this? <laughs> Well, I think, I think with um, you know, the, the difference in, in interviewing for a job and um, acting auditions in, or interviews, whatever you want to call them, um, after every job, you got to go out and find another one. It gets uh, to the point where you know, you'll, you'll even see some of the same people in the room you know, that, that, that are auditioning you. You just want to go, I just worked with you two weeks ago. Just hire me. <laughs> when did you last sing to yourself, and what song did you choose? Uh, I sang to myself today, and I sang a song called Worth. It's um, a gospel song. Uh, Anthony Brown. Huh. Ooh. Pretty. How about one more? Uh, what would you title your autobiography? Oof. Autobiography would probably be titled "I'm Still Here Through All the Pain." Yeah, I, I think I think uh, I think in life, you know, it's like it's like as you as you go through life, there's there's um, degrees of pain. And as I look back on my life, although I've had like a really blessed life, um, I think the the moments that I've had pain in my life. Whether, whether it was physical or I learned something. And um, none of the pain has killed me yet. So I think, uh, yeah, that'd be a good title. That's so true. Well, we're, we're going to share uh, links to all of your social media in the article, as well as links to the organizations that you're a part of. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, uh, the electronic shenanigans, but I don't know why it's not working. I don't know why my my, my thing is still spinning right now. Yeah, and I hear a funny little buzz too. So we always have electronic shenanigans on this podcast, so we're used to it. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe my 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 computer is trying to die. Ah. I think another, mine is, is, is on its last leg as well. <laughs> yeah, another, another day, like. Well, we look forward to seeing you. Hopefully, when we're out in California next year, we'll stop and say hey. And um, we'll let you know this is posting next Wednesday, so we'll tag you on all the social okay. media. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mark, for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Yes, take care. Have a great weekend. You too. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.